This series of bonus podcast episodes were taken from my nine hour live stream on the 15th of April, 2020. I interviewed 16 speakers back to back whilst on lockdown from the coronavirus pandemic and I thought I would edit them just for you. Hope you enjoy and stay safe, my friends. So what we're trying to do today then is give a little bit of value across the day. And I think it would be great because you've summarised that quite well there. Your new design pack is for people who may have to speak who might not have wanted to speak or spoke before or they've been promoted into that particular space and you've come up with something to help them through that so can we talk about that because I really want to try and give this value to people because quite often when people speak they kind of take the words straight away and they rattle a load of words out and it doesn't really form well or they might take the the powerpoint and start creating slides straight away and not yeah that that drives drives around the bend because as soon as you start working on powerpoint two things happen the first is your brain starts to think like powerpoint it's got no choice because you're using that tool you know if you pick up a hammer you've got to hit things if you pick up a saw you have to saw things you know if you pick up chocolate you've got to eat it right so if you pick up powerpoint that's you think the other thing that happens of course is that part of your brain i hope you're getting paid for the advertising there part of your brain is given over to the technology of of using the software which means you've got less headspace for for doing all the other stuff so just about everybody I've ever spoken to, and the research is very, very clear. If you want to make yourself a proper presentation and get it absolutely nailed, you're far better off designing the presentation. The pre- design the presentation, I'm just you know, old school, right? Pen and paper, just do it analog. Use post-it notes. Use 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 index cards. Anything you like, just so that you're not going down the going down the digital route. Get all your information sorted out first. Get your structure sorted out first. Get everything clear in your head. And then think about how you're going to deliver it to your audience. Because let's face it, if you don't know what it is that you're trying to tell people, I, I've got to ask how the hell do you know how to design your slides? You know, you, okay. You've got to know what it is that people need to hear. But we talk very much about uh, the company. We talk very much about the gift. What is it you're going to give the audience? Mm-hmm. And if you don't know what you're trying to give them, Oh, here's a torturous analogy, all right? A really torturous <laughs> analogy, all right? Think of the content of your presentation as the gift. Think of the delivery of the presentation as the wrapping. And, but if you don't know what the gift is, you don't know how to wrap it. You don't know whether it's got to go in a box. You don't know whether it's got to go in a stocking. You don't know, um, you, you know, you can't. There's all kinds of people being nice about my presentation design pack in the uh, in, in the comments, which is really sweet. Thank you very much, everybody. Um, but you've got to know exactly what it is that you're that you're wrapping. You've got to know what it is that you're giving people. So I use my science background, as I say, 24 years as a researcher, to research the best approach for developing a good presentation. Um, and that's what I wrote up, and that's what I created, and that's what's gone into the presentation design pack. It, it's I, I'm, I'm going to cross my fingers here and pray that it's idiot-proof. I'm sure it isn't, but it would be lovely if it was an idiot-proof <laughs> way. Of, you know, if you follow these instructions, you will end up with a good presentation. You won't end up with a great presentation. You won't end up with a genius presentation because that takes skill and craft and experience and flair, but you will end up with a bloody good one, something that you can use and get ovations from and actually has an impact and makes the work because the thing for me the reason i make presentations the way i reason i train people in making presentations is because it's a form of telepathy it's how you change the world it's you know presentation is getting information from my head into somebody else's head well that's that's telepathy right Mm -hmm. um and then they take what it is that you have given them and they do something with it and the world's a little bit different to how it was before i started my presentation my presentations (laughs) this is a really I was about to swear. Um, this is a really sort of egocentric sounding. Well, Bonnie kicked us off straight away at nine o'clock with this. Oh, yeah. Girl, it's a Glasgow girl, girl. Yeah. It's a, bit, it's, a bit, it's a bit wanky, isn't it? But I'm going to say it. <laughs> Presentations change the world. I go on stage, and when I come off stage, just like Jeff, just like the others, the world should be a different place when we get off stage. If it's not, all we've done is being a stand up comic. Now, I know that sounds like I'm being rude about helping the stand up comic. I'm not. I can't do that. But their job is to entertain. My job is to change the world. That's a slightly different skill set. Actually, it's a yeah. very different skill set. Yeah. I can't be as funny as Alfie and that kind of stuff. Not intentionally, anyway. Yeah. 
So, so taking taking that, then we'll, we'll get the concept of it. Let, let can we look at the mechanics of it? So, what is the structure of, of how you would do that? So we know what the gift is, right? We know what the rabbit is. Let's break okay. it down. How, how do you do it? So the very first thing I, I help people do: um, get your content, put all your content onto separate index cards. Or actually, hang on a second, I've got one hundred. Or if you're going to use the present presentation design pack, put put your content information on one of those, one piece of information per card, lay them out on the table, shuffle them around until you've got the absolutely perfect structure and perfect format, and that's the flow of your presentation. And then you start looking for where the chapter breaks are, then you start putting the top and the tail on it and that kind of jazz. And only when you have done that do you start thinking about whether the best way to deliver it is dancing elephants or PowerPoint or Prezi <laughs> or whatever. I would love to see the risk assessment. If I went on stage and went, you know what, the best way to deliver this presentation is dancing elephants, here's the risk assessment for dancing elephants. <laughs> Be great. But the idea is that you get all the information, you lay it down on the table in front of you or the desk or the chair or something. In fact, I saw um, Richard Tubb, you've had it on earlier. Yeah. Um, Tubb, the pro speaker, and he uses the presentation design pack. Um, he sent me a photograph of the first time he, he was using it, and he had his cards laid out on the bed in his hotel room um, because there wasn't space on the floor on the desk, so he just kind of laid them out on the but you get the idea is that you do the manipulation outside your own head because nobody has the mental capacity unless you are oh, breathtakingly okay. experienced. Nobody has the mental capacity to think of content, structure, and order at the same time. So you separate those those bits and bobs, and then when you've got that sorted out. Then and only yeah. then can you start talking about how you deliver it to people. And the thing that always frustrates me is. When people come to me and say, can you give me some presentations training? What they want me to do is I don't know, is tell me how to deliver a presentation. But actually, that's the last part of the process. You start with the content, then you have structure, then you have design, then you have delivery. Um, but it's the delivery piece that people always want me to help them with. And that's what pays, you know, pays the mortgage and stuff. But it's actually the end point of the presentation. Know what you're going yeah. to give people first. Know what supporting material is first. Then do the structure. Then do the design. Yeah, I was uh, so going to say that if you're helping people with the presentation, how can you how can you help them present something that isn't isn't the finished article? You've yeah. got to get that bit done before you're the end, surely. Yeah, yeah. So there's occasionally one of the things that drove me around the bend recently was um, I was doing a, a a course on on confident presenting. Mm -hmm. um, and I, I asked what's called the Gandalf question, which is if I wave my magic wand, what would be different at the end of this session with me compared to the beginning? Yeah. Uh, and one of the people there said, oh, I'd be much more confident about giving presentations. I'd be much more confident about X, Y, Z. And they told me some changes in the law that were coming, X, Y, Z. Okay. Um, the problem was that they weren't prepared to sit down and learn the changes in the law. What they wanted to do was use me as a shortcut to being okay. able to be to be confident without being competent. But to be honest, you know, eighty percent of confidence comes from knowing what the hell you're talking about. <laughs> yeah. um, and if you don't have that nailed down before you start, it's it's a car crash waiting to happen. Mm. Yeah. Sorry, have I frosted the mouth for long enough there? No. What, what's your what's your the twenty percent of confidence? Oh, there are tools I can teach you. There's things like the peripheral vision technique, and there's the um, uh, anchoring technique. There's sentence zero. There's a whole bunch of techniques I can I can teach people. Ooh, what's sentence, zero? sentence zero. Sentence mm zero. -hmm. So, imagine that you are really nervous. Okay. It's, okay. It's your first date, Ian. Right. Okay. Well, Phil Teasdale is in the green room. I can see him at the corner of my eye, so I'm really nervous. Look, oh, there he's waving at me. Okay. Is I'm he your next now. date? Need uh, yes, my next date. <laughs> Imagine that you're really nervous. It's on your date or something, okay? Mm -hmm. And when you're really nervous, what tends to happen is that the first thing you say comes out from the high pressure air at the top of your lungs. So you might go on stage and go, "Hello, my name is Dr. Sam Ribold." <laughs> and you think, right? That's that's the first sentence of your presentation. But what I want you to do is create a sentence that goes before that, which is sentence zero. With me so far? Yes. Okay. So you say sentence zero, then the word and, and then sentence one. And you say it all in one breath. 
which means that by the time you get to sentence one, you've used up all the high pressure air at the top of your lungs and you're now the low pressure air from the bottom of your lungs. The trick is to say sentence zero silently. So what the audience hear is a half second silence and good afternoon, my name's Simon. Do you say it in a, your head or do you say it? Say it in your head. Say it in your head or whatever you want to do. Say it in your head, but don't say it out loud. But the point is that you breathe out during sentence zero. So by the time you get to your first sentence, your real proper sentence one, all the, all the nervous air is gone and you're down to the cooler, calmer air. Um, I have never yet had this happen to me, but in principle, I would urge people to make sure that sentence zero is clean just in case they accidentally <laughs> say it out loud. Yeah. Uh, so my sentence zero for the last gig I did was... Was it? I said um, I said to myself, there are fewer people here than I was expecting. That means I'm going to have enough handouts. And good morning, everybody. My name's Simon. Nicely done. Um, is that making sense? So by the time I got yeah, to cool. good morning, everybody, I was, I was cooler and calmer sounding and my voice was much more relaxed and things. And the reason we put the word and in there is to stop people doing a gasping breath because we found that what people often did was go sentence zero <gasps> hello my <laughs> and they would gasp before sentence one so if you just put the word and in there sentence zero and <sighs> sentence one. Oh, thank you laura very kind of you uh, so you, you you start articulating sentence one at that point uh, so there's there's sentence zero um Nappy, you can try it out whenever we meet for coffee or something or whatever. As long as you're paying for the coffee, you're in, you're in business. <laughs> and then peripheral vision. Have I shown you the peripheral vision technique? Go for it. Yeah, we've got a couple of minutes. Okay, so one of the things that happens when you're frightened is that a hormone called cortisol kicks in and your brain starts focusing on more and more and more on fewer and fewer things. And the evolutionary logic of that is that you take in more information about the thing that is frightening you. So if you see a saber-toothed tiger, you take in much more information about the saber-toothed tiger because you're taking in less information about the flowers around you and all that kind of jazz. Yeah. Is that okay? Yeah? Mm. So I'm sitting here looking at you. The only thing in my office that is even remotely frightening is the little green light on the top of my computer that says you're broadcasting live to the world. So my brain goes, and I obsess about that little green light which means that 100% of what I'm looking at scares me. From an evolutionary point of view, that's perfect. But from a presenter's point of view, it's just a car crash waiting to happen. So the trick, the technique, is for a presenter to start their presentation and choose to become consciously aware of everything in their peripheral vision. So I'm looking at the little green light now, but at the corner of my eye, peripheral vision stuff, I can see a cup of tea, that's not scary. The window, that's not scary. A pile of scrap paper, that's not scary. A printer, that's not scary. A picture that my daughter did for me when she was six, that's not scary. My white bar over there, that's not scary. Another pile of uh, stuff that I haven't yet sorted out, that's not scary. My spare laptop over there, that's not scary. My lamp, there you go, there's my, there's my lamp, that's not scary. <laughs> Um, so what that's done is it's changed the here is the little green light thing to here are lots of things, one of which is scary, but it's in the context of a whole bunch of other things that are no longer scary. And your brain, long story short, your brain kicks into something called a biomechanical feedback loop, which basically means you fool your brain to thinking that that scary thing is not as scary because it's only one scary thing out of 30, 40 or 50 that you mm. can see. So when you're doing a live presentation, obviously the little green light thing, that's the audience. You know, you stop on stage, you see the audience, and now what you do is make a point of seeing stuff out of the corner of your eye, which might be the edge of the stage or the confidence monitor or all of that kind of all of that kind of jazz. Oh, yeah. I've just seen that as a question. I you've never heard this one before. <laughs> Please don't. There's a number of reasons you don't hear that. First is how can you expect your audience to respect you if you don't respect your audience? Okay. Second okay. point. There are some people I never want to see naked, ever. Thank you very much indeed. Well, can you remember Third, you saw me naked when you... Uh, I you did, but that was, me that, time. <laughs> that was your fault for answering the phone in the shower with a video chat. <laughs> I felt quite intimidated, to be honest. <laughs> But the third thing that happens is that you've now got something else to think about. So you've got the content of your presentation, you've got the structure of your presentation, and now you're trying to get 
your brain to fake something. You're going, what would these people look like if they were naked? And that takes up an enormous amount of processing power in your, in your head, making it more likely that you're going to make a mistake. Not a, not a good plan. There are other techniques that are mechanical that don't require body mechanical, that is, that don't require you to compromise your mental integrity. Right, good man. Uh, before before you go, are you I, gonna? Can you can, can you do something about your presentation back? Do you want to? Do you want to give us a link? Do you want to tell? Do you know what? I've got something that might be more useful to people in lockdown. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Go. Because um, mm. there's a lot of people now having to change from online face to face presentations to online mm. presentations. Mm -hmm. um, if you if people go to and I've literally just written this to help people out in the last fortnight. Um, if yeah. you go to presentations.thinkific.com, I'm trying so to write this down. Presentation. What? what? Presentation. Presentations plural. Presentations. Yeah. Dot thinkific. Thinkific. Yeah. Dot com. Okay. There's a course I've written there to help people get from live presentations to online presentations. And if they use the, just checking that's right, yep. And if they use the offer code, have more impact Ooh. with capital mm -hmm. H, M and C, have more impact, they get a whopping great discount off it. Just, just because let's face it, if they've sat through you and I talking tosh like this, they probably need all the help they can possibly get. Like this? Capital H, M, I, capital H for have, capital M for more, and capital I for impact. But awesome. yes, that would be. Good man. And that'll get them a shed load of dosh off it. But I figured it was more use because let's face it, this is too big to go through your letterbox, which means you're going to have to leave the house to go to the post office to collect it. Um, so it made more ah, sense for me to good idea. Well more done. useful Thanks. for people. More useful for people because more people are going to be going online and, and learning how to use Zoom and do online presentations and things. So I thought it'd be more useful to do that than to talk about the presentation design pack. It's almost as though, as a professional, I had warned you that that was what I was doing. Nobody tell Ian that we were talking about him while he was gone. I'll watch it back later on, some sort of like. Alfie said you were a sod, but I defended you, Ian. Alfie's a lovely lad. He's a he's a he's a he's a good Catholic man like myself, so we're good friends. You Catholic? Well, yeah. I... What do you mean? What's that look for? Of course, I'm. I'm, 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 I'm a Catholic in shields. I'm a, I'm a model Catholic. Well, my mom's Irish, so we're from good quality stock, man. Model Catholic. What is <laughs> <laughs> she's probably watching her live. She's watching her live going, oh, really? <laughs> how, how, <laughs> what, see, yeah.